Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And the Masters of the Universe! In the mid-80s, many kids were watching the butchest and yet somehow gayest cartoon that ever hit the airwaves, He-Man. I could tell you what the story's about, but why not let He-Man tell you himself? I am Adam, Prince of Eternia, defender of the secrets of Castle Grayskull. A prince, really? I, uh, never would have guessed. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, By the power of Grayskull! I guess he was just going through that holding aloft his magic sword and saying by the power of Grayskull phase. But luckily they happened to contain superpowers. And I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe! Except for Lou Scheimer, who apparently always gets top billing. So you get the idea. He-Man took place in another dimension where he defended the Castle Grayskull from the evil Skeletor. It wasn't a great show, but we enjoyed watching it, and years later people still love to talk about the gay overtones this show gave us. Now many of you might be saying, No! He-Man isn't gay! How dare you say something like that! Well, anyone who's still in question about this should take a look at the 1987 motion picture epic Masters of the Universe. A film that teaches us it's okay to be gay, but not a god-awful piece of retro crap. So let's just jump in and take a look at the first problem with this movie, the title. Why the hell is it just called Masters of the Universe and not He-Man Masters of the Universe? I mean, half of us didn't even know this was a He-Man movie because we never cared what came after the He-Man title. I mean, all we ever heard was He-Man something 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 something. So why didn't they leave it in? I don't know. Believe me, that's the least of this movie's problems. Oh my god. So the story begins at Castle Grayskull, which apparently is located in the Grand Canyon. The evil Skeletor has taken over the castle, but is angry because he looks like how John McCain will look in a couple of years. The only one who can stop Skeletor is the always shirtless He-Man, who's played by Dolph Lundgren. You know, the Russian guy from Rocky IV. I must break you. Trust me, I'd rather have you break me than sit through this ass fest. This guy is so foreign that I think even he forgets what accent he's supposed to have. Now why are you so important to Skeletor? I've been looking for you! That's how Skeletor's troops got into the city and surprised us. It sounds jur russian knees. So He-Man is accompanied by his team, led by Men of Arms, who's pretty damn old compared to the cartoon, but not as old as John McCain in just a few years. Okay, okay, that's the last John McCain joke I'll make. Intentionally. He's also joined by Tila, Man of Arms' daughter. Woman at arms. Hey, hey, that's not funny! And Gwildor, who I guess is supposed to be like Orko, but again, why didn't they just make it like the show and call him Orko? Sure, he looks like the gay love child of Yoda from Star Wars and Gizmo from Gremlins, but we're not that picky. You can still call him Orko and we'd buy it. And speaking of gay, just look at this first action sequence and tell me there's no homoerotic themes going on here. It's okay to be gay, let's rejoice with the boys in the gay way. for the kind of man that you would find in the gay way. It's like Star Wars, only gayer. Dude, did he just zap that guy in the crotch? Actually, there's a lot of shots to the crotch in this movie. Talk about great balls of fire. But again, no gay overtones. So it turns out Skeletor is after Gwildor because he's invented a cosmic key that can take you to any dimension you want. Skeletor wants this device so he can, you guessed it, take over the world. Of course! People of Eternia, the war is over. Those who do not pledge themselves to me shall be Destroyed. Sounds like John McCain's inaugural speech to me. Okay, okay. I, I don't even dislike the guy, I just, these jokes are too easy. I'll try to do better. It turns out Skeletor has also captured an enchanted sorceress known as, well, the sorceress. He-Man tries to negotiate for her freedom. Let her go. I don't think so. Negotiation's over! <laughs> He-Man tries to save the sorceress, but appears to be outnumbered. So Gildor opens up the key and sends them to another dimension. It's like Back to the Future, only gayer. So He-Man and his team use the cosmic key to end up in which parallel dimension? Ours, of course, right dab in the middle of New Jersey. So let me get this straight. He-Man, the master of the universe, is going to use all his intergalactic weaponry and medieval-style fighting moves in the suburbs of New Jersey? This is gonna suck, isn't it? Holy shit! 
All right, so He-Man is stuck in New Jersey as they're looking for the planet's inhabitants. Alien life form. Big. Let me blast Wait. it. Wait. It might be intelligent life. In this movie, I doubt that. It's the best actor in the movie! Uh, At least that line didn't sound rehearsed! Okay, so what's the epic hero He-Man and his mighty crew's first order of duty? To steal buckets of chicken from a second-rate drive through restaurant! Of course! Good food. Never think while you're hungry. And the Raiders of the Kentucky Fried Chicken! One of the people who works at that fast food restaurant is Julie played strangely enough by Courtney Cox. If you break up with Kevin Corrigan, you will regret it for the rest of your life. Kevin's changed, I've changed. A, you still love him, and B, he still loves you. When did this turn to Dawson's Creek? She's bummed because apparently her folks died in some sort of plane accident a year ago. Isn't this just what you think of when you think of a He-Man movie? Your mom and dad wouldn't want you to go around the rest of your life blaming yourself. What they? No. And the masters of the depressing plot expositions! Meanwhile, Skeletor tracks down their position and sends out his evil team to find them. By the way, is it me, or does this guy really like dramatic turns? Seriously, I wish I had dramatic music every time I turned my head. I mean, what would. So Julie and her boyfriend find the cosmic key as Skeletor's troops close in on them. Look at these guys, they look like the Thundercats on the way to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Julie and her boyfriend are separated as Julie comes under attack by Skeletor's Muppet demons. He-Man senses babes and decides he wants to go after her. Once again, we get an erotic dance number, which I suppose is supposed to be an action sequence. I'm sorry, but why does He-Man carry a sword if everyone else carries a laser? I mean, what is the purpose? I don't know! I don't know! After He-Man rescues Julie, he decides to tell her exactly what he's looking for. Have you seen it? It's this large, it has lights on it. But again, no gay overtones. Meanwhile, Julie's boyfriend meets up with a cop played by the principal from Back to the Future. His job is to bitch and moan as often as possible. You can't order me around. What is this, a circus act? I got vandalism, I got arson. What the hell is going on out there? We got stuff blowing up in my face. Choice, really choice. This guy is so annoying he makes Chris Tucker look like James Earl Jones. Most of the time he's not even solving any crimes. He's just making fun of Julie's boyfriend and messing around with that cosmic key. Is it really wise to mess around with a dimensional manipulator? I mean, you never know what kind of damage you could be causing. I don't think this is any synthesizer. Looking for the key, He-Man and his heroic crew decide to go traveling around the city in a pink Cadillac! Alright, these are no longer gay overtones. This is an orchestra of gayness! <laughs> And the shoppers of the feminine automobiles! Meanwhile, Skeletor himself arrives on Earth, bringing all his evil armies with him. How does nobody in the city know this is going on? I mean, are there really people looking out their windows right now saying, Boy, that neighborhood watch is really cracking down. Meanwhile, Julie's boyfriend and Mr. Clean continue to argue and bicker, as no doubt bigger and better action scenes could be taking place right now. Watching these two is like watching an episode of Mad About You, only gayer. Shut up! Actually, I think I realized why the title of this movie wasn't called He-Man. Because He-Man's never in it! Most of the time, it's just focusing on his team, Courtney Cox, or the odd couple here. I don't believe it! Everyone eventually meets up at a record store, where I swear to God the weirdest combination of lines and images come together. I mean, just try watching this whole scene with a straight face. Freeze, all of you. Let's start with you, Blondie. He-Man, He-Man! What the hell is that? You'll trick five. That's him! Wither, how long to calculate the coordinates and take us home? You'd rather stay here and face evil and commando. That's fine with me. Look, believe me, sir, you wouldn't. All right, someone has gone batshit crazy. It's either me or the movie makers. Either way, I am very concerned. I feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone or something. Suddenly, Skeletor's army appears, and they have to have an epic battle in a record store. A record store! I can't even believe I'm saying this. How sensitive you are. Meanwhile, one of Skeletor's henchmen poses as Julie's mother, who just so happened to come back from the dead and needs that cosmic key inside. Yeah, this doesn't sound like a setup at all. 
Thank you, my darling. No! Ah, I totally didn't see that coming. I think not. I'm sorry, but wasn't this trick used once in Spaceballs? That's pretty bad when a film is so desperate for ideas that it starts ripping off Mel Brooks sci-fi comedies. Ow! you! So Skeletor gets the key and demands He-Man to be his slave, or else he'll kill his teammates. He-Man agrees as his friends are left behind with the other half of the key. Julie's boyfriend wonders why they can't just use their key to find Skeletor, but Harry Knowles tells them that he can't remember the exact notes that could transport them back. Yeah, apparently the key operates on notes instead of numbers or letters. So of course, being the 80s, it synthesized music to the rescue as they rock their way to the exact coordinates. Pretty lame. And the mystic time travelers of the Oingo Boingo! Back in Eternia, Skeletor somehow got He-Man into even less clothes and tortures him with some kind of holographic Twizzler whip or something. Look at this, he's actually leaning his butt into the whip, like he's actually enjoying it! No gay overtones. And I guess He-Man's sword is the only thing that can give Skeletor supreme power of the universe, or I don't know, some shit like that. So he plunks it into his Nintendo chair and absorbs all the powers of the cosmos, while making the longest goddamn speech in the friggin' world. Yes! I feel the universe within me. I am... I am a part of the cosmos. Its energy flows... flows through me. Of what consequence are you now? This planet, these people, they are nothing to me! The universe is power! Pure, unstoppable! Power! And I am that force! I am that power! Kneel before your master! Fool! You are no longer my equal! I am more than man! More than life! I... God! God, this speech is so long-winded and pointless, it's like being in a John McCain rally. Oh, what it slipped! So after his speech is over, Skeletor uses his demonic powers to become a gay metallic Chiquita Bananinator. What? But before he can destroy our hero, He-Man's friends come in to save the day. Farewell, He-Man. Wow, the ruler of the universe has really lousy aim. So He-Man breaks free and starts using his manly strength to defeat the soldiers. He does this by pushing over statues that are so strong, they actually bounce when they hit the ground. I guess they've been in the sun too long? So He-Man gets his sword back and battles the evil Skeletor metallic banana thingy. It's kind of like Conan, only, well, you know. This battle takes forever, but He-Man finally defeats Old Skull and Crossbones. It's over. Oh, good. I thought this movie was never gonna end. You. Okay, so He-Man defeats Skeletor again, and then throws him into a gigantic endless pit. Is it me, or is this the slowest fall in the history of slowest falls? I think the movie could actually start ramping up, and he'd still be falling. He-Man? Tila? Man at arms? Don't... don't say goodbye. There's an old attorney saying. Live the journey. For every destination is but a doorway to another. You look after him now. I will. Activate the doorway, Gregor. Uh, uh, are you sure uh, you don't want to go back to your planet's history? So He-Man saves the day, the sorceress is rescued, and Julie gets sent back home. But wait, there's an added bonus! They sent her back a year before her parents died and before nightgowns look less like the clothing from Little House on the Prairie. So now she can tell her parents not to go on that plane that would ultimately lead them to their doom. So just to reiterate, kids, if your parents die by some sort of horrific circumstance, all you have to do is look for a parallel dimension that has big hunky beef men who can take you back in time and change the whole thing. That way you never have to come to grips with death or the harshness of reality. What a load! Is that what you want to teach your kids? That if family or loved ones die, there's always a chance you can bring them back from the dead? That's like saying He-Man is straight. In that... It's not true. It's a lie. Because he is so gay! I mean, people trying to defend that he's not gay, you're just wrong! Well said. The only thing gayer than him is this movie! It's stupid, boring, and a flaming waste of time!
And that's not to say I have anything against homosexuality. It's just, there's gotta be something out there, some kind of alternative hero that's gay, but at least gives us something appealing to look at. You know what? I'll take that over this shit any day. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to.